نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily the praise belongs to Allah We praise Him and seek His assistance and forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of our deeds Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead him astray and whoever Allah leads astray, there is no one that can guide him I bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone and that he has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama is his slave servant and his messenger uh, I would like to begin as we normally do with a quick review of the previous uh, points from the last lecture in the last lecture we discussed one point, point number 41 where Imam al-Tahawi uh, rahimahullah says point number 41 وَالشَّفَاعَةُ الَّتِي اِدَّخَرَهَا لَهُمْ حَقٌ كَمَا رُوِيَ فِي الْأَخْبَارِ يعني that الشفاعه or intercession uh, which has been stored up or saved for them, for the Muslims it is true, it is a reality, it is a fact as has been narrated in the reports or in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here Imam al-Tahawi basically mentions this point of al-shafa'a that on yawm al-qiyamah Allah would allow whomever he wills and whoever he is pleased with to intercede or to speak up on behalf of others and he mentioned a number of types of al-shafa'a or intercession uh, and from amongst them the greatest intercession is al-shafa' al uzma which is the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of resurrection when all the people would be standing waiting for the judgment to begin and it would be a frightening and terrifying situation and the people would want the judgment to start and after going to each one of the Prophets they finally went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa who went before Allah and prostrated himself before Allah and praised Allah with words that Allah revealed to him at that time and was given permission uh, to intercede uh, the other types of intercession we mentioned I think uh, a number of types from amongst them is that those whose deeds, good deeds and evil deeds were equal they would be allowed someone they would be allowed to be intercede, interceded for and those who were destined to be punished would not enter the hellfire and those who were in the hellfire their punishment might be lightened and those who were expected to enter the paradise their degree or their station in paradise might be raised up and so on and one type of intercession that was uh, allowed that would be allowed for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which normally there is no intercession for the disbelievers but we said as it has been reported authentically from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah would allow him to intercede for his uncle Abu Talib uh, in order to lighten the punishment for him in the hellfire in any case a shafa'a is a reality, it is a fact, it is a truth it will take place and the Muslims, the believers should count on it and expect it and hope for it and hope for it, Nam. We also said that uh, that there are two conditions for intercession. One of them is that there is no intercession except by permission from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and also that those who are given permission to intercede would only be allowed to intercede for the one that Allah is pleased with. Yeah, and that Allah is pleased that that person should be interceded for. And we said that there is intercession specifically for the Prophet and there is general intercession for the other Prophets and the angels and the believers and so on. This is a quick summary of what we covered. 
uh, last week. In the next point, Al Imam Al Tahawi, point number 42, he, Rahimahullah, says, Wal Mithaqu Aladi Akhada Hullahu Ta'ala Min Adam Wadurriyatihi Hakun. Also, a truth, a reality, a fact is Al Mithaq. Al Mithaq is the firm covenant. The firm covenant that Allah has taken from Adam alayhi salam and from his offspring, the Riyati. This Mithaq or this covenant is a reality, it is true. It is a covenant that Allah took from Adam alayhi salam, the first man and the first prophet. And from all of the children of Adam before we were brought into this world. Uh, here, the Sheikh Muhammad al Qumis, in his summary of this point, he says that uh, Al Mithaq, or this covenant, it is true, it is a fact. It is the covenant that Allah has taken from Adam السلام, and from his offspring at the time when he passed his hand over his back. When Allah passed his hand over the back of Adam and caused to come out of the loins of Adam every living creature, every human being that was going to exist until Yawm Qiyamah. Yani Allah caused to come from the loins of Adam all of his offspring. Every human being that's going to come into this world until the the Day of Judgment was caused to come from the loins of Adam السلام, as he is the father of human beings. After the, the, the offspring being brought from the loins of Adam, then Allah took from them an oath, a covenant that they should acknowledge and admit and bear witness that Allah is their Lord they took an oath and bear witness against themselves that Allah is their Lord. This is called al mithaq al-awwal, the first covenant that was taken by Allah from the human beings. And this covenant is mentioned in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse 172. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَانِ آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ Bani Adam, when Allah has taken, when your Lord has taken at the time when He took from Bani Adam, from the children of Adam, or the offspring of Adam, min zuhurihim, from their loins, zurriyatahum, all of their offspring, wa ashhadahum ala anfusihim, and He caused them to bear witness against themselves, alas to bi rabbikum, Allah said to all of the offspring of Adam, Alas to be Rabbikum and I not am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? Yani, and everyone has to admit and bear witness at that moment. Qalu Bala. They said, Yes indeed, you are our Lord. Shahidana and they bear witness. And taqulu yawm al qiyama inna kunna anha the ghafirin. So that they would not be able to say on the day of resurrection that we were unaware of this, that we didn't know about such a thing. But we didn't know that you are our Lord, that you are the only one that should be worshipped, that you are the only one that has the right to be worshipped. No one will be able to say such as Allah caused everyone to stand before Him and to admit and to bear witness against themselves to this fact. أَوْ تَقُولُوا إِنَّمَا أَشْرَكَ آبَاؤُنَا مِنْ قَبُلُ وَكُنَّا ذُرِّيَةً مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ أَفَتُحْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ الْمُبْتِلُونَ or so also they would not be able to say that our ancestors, our forefathers, they are the ones who made shirk before us. And we are only their offspring coming after them. Should you destroy us for what they did? Those people, يعني, those who destroyed, who were destroyed because of their deeds, al-mubtilun. 
So here Allah made the people to take this covenant, to take this oath, to bear testimony or witness against themselves, uh, acknowledging that they know about this matter, it is known to them, and therefore everyone, every human being is responsible. Everyone is responsible uh, for themselves to answer and to respond and to acknowledge this fact and to act on it. There are a number of hadith mentioned in the books of hadith uh, concerning al mithaq and in this brief summary explanation he didn't mention any of the hadith so I went to the original explanation of uh, Ibn Abdul Iz rahimahullah where he has given a comprehensive explanation of this point and I would like to just read some of the hadith that he mentioned the first of them uh, after mentioning this point, Ibn Abdul Iz says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah in Surah Al-A'raf has informed us that he has brought out the descendants or the offspring of Adam, the Bani Adam, from the loins, from their loins and caused everyone to bear witness against themselves that Allah is our Lord and that he is our, uh, the one who owns us and controls us and that there is no one or nothing that has the right to be worshipped except him. Many hadith concerning this matter has been reported and also in those hadith not only the, the mithaq, the covenant is mentioned but also the distinction of the children or the offspring of Adam dividing them into ashab al-yameen, those of the right hand or ashab al-shimal, those of the left uh, yani those, people, those who will be the people of paradise and those who will be the people of the hellfire and cause them to bear witness against themselves the first of those hadith is an authentic hadith it is sahih so, and it due to the many uh, chains of nar- narrations that came and that hadith is reported by Imam Ahmed rahimahullah from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma may Allah be pleased with him and his father from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said verily inna Allah akhadha al-mithaq min zahri Adam alayhi salam بنعمان يوم يوم عرفة فأخرج من سلبه كل ذرية ذرأها ونشرها بين يديه ثم كلمهم قبلا يعني in this hadith he mentions the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah took a covenant or an oath uh, from the children of Adam when he took them out of his loins on يوم on the يوم العرفة he brought them from his loins, all the people that he was going to create and he put them in, brought them in front of him and he spoke to them facing them Allah facing them said أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا They said yes, we bear witness until the end of the ayah that we mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf This hadith is also reported not only in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed also in the Sunan of Nasai and in the Tafsir of Ibn Jarir of Tabari and other scholars. The second hadith he mentions is also reported by Imam Ahmed and it is reported by in the Sunan of Abu Dawud, the Sunan of Tirmidhi, the Sunan of Nasai, Ibn Abi Hatim, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari and Ibn Hibban in his Sahih on the authority of Umar Ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu he was asked about this verse in Surah Al-A'raf and he said سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ سُئِلَ أَنْهَا I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم asked about it when Umar was asked about this ayah what is the meaning of it he said I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم being asked about it and he the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ آدَمْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ ثَمَّ مَسَحَ ظَهْرَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَاسْتَخْرَجَ مِنْهُ ذُرِّيَةً That verily Allah created Adam alayhi salam Then he passed his hand over his right hand over his back And he brought out from him his offspring Then he said خَلَقْتُ هَؤُلَاءِ لِلْجَنَّةِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said I have created these for paradise وَبِعَمَلْ أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ and that these who I have created for paradise they will do the deeds of the people of paradise they will do the deeds of the people of paradise 
ثم مسح ظهره فاستخرج منه ذرية then he rubbed his hand across his back again and he brought out offspring of Adam and he said خلقت هؤلاء للنار وبيعمل أهل النار يعملون these I have created for the hellfire and they will act accordingly they will do the deeds of the people of hellfire فقال رجل then one of the people when they heard this hadith from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said يا رسول الله ففيما العمل then why are we doing deeds and if Allah created these people for paradise and they will do the deeds of people of paradise and he created these people for the hellfire what are we struggling and striving doing <laughs> all these good deeds for we already created for paradise no need to do anything قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله عز وجل إذا خلق العبد للجنة استعمله بعمل أهل الجنة حتى يموت على عمل من أعمال أهل الجنة فيدخل به الجنة whenever Allah creates any of his servants for the paradise then he will cause them to do the deeds of the people of paradise until he dies doing a deed from the deeds of the people of paradise yani the last deeds that he would do would be the deeds of the paradise, people of paradise the last deeds that he do would be the deeds of the people of paradise then he would enter do to it he would enter the paradise وإذا خلق العبد أو خلق العبد للنار استعمله بعمل أهل النار حتى يموت على عمل من أعمال أهل النار فيدخل به النار and if Allah created anyone or if any of the servants of Allah is created for the fire then he would be caused to do the deeds of the people of hellfire until he dies doing a deed dies yani the final deed that he would do would be a deed from the deeds of the people of the hellfire and then due to that he would enter the hellfire and this hadith is also sahih due to the many reports or narrations or chains of narratives that it came by the third hadith is a hadith reported by At-Tirmidhi on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه he said قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما خلق الله آدم when Allah created Adam مسح على ظهره فسقط من ظهره كل نسمة أو كل نسمة هو خالقها من ذريته إلى يوم القيام that when Allah created Adam he rubbed his hand over his back and caused to fall from his loins every living being that Allah is the creator of from the offspring of Adam until Yawm Al-Qiyam he caused them to come out وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ أَيْنَيْ كُلُّ إِنْسَانٍ مِنْهُمْ وَبَيْصًا مِنْ نُورٍ and Allah placed between the eyes of every human being some light light between their eyes ثُمَّ عَرَدَهُمْ عَلَى آدَمْ then he put them in front of Adam to look at his offspring فَقَالَ أَيُّ رَبْ he said, Oh my Lord, من هؤلاء? Who are these people? قال هؤلاء ذريتك. These are your offspring. فرأى رجلا منهم فعجبه ويبس ما بين عينيه. Then one of those people that he saw amongst his offspring was very pleasing to him. And he saw the light between his eyes. He said, Ay Rabb, من هذا? Who is this one? قال هذا رجل من آخر الأمم من ذريتك. يقال له داود عليه السلام. He said this is a man from the end of the nations. I mean from the end of time. Look at when Daud عليه السلام, the Prophet David came. Allah said this is one of your offspring from the end of the nations. That means that this time that Daud came in is the end of the nations. Not long. That's not long in comparison to the time of the human beings on this earth. He said he is called Daud. All رب كم عمره then Adam عليه السلام said oh my lord how, how, what is his age how long will he live and Adam was pleased with this one of his offspring out of all that he saw in front of him he was very pleased with him and he said how long is his lifespan he said ستون سنة 60 years and Dawood would live 60 years قال اي رب زده من عمري 40 سنة then Adam alayhi salam said, increase him by 40 years from my lifespan. Yani take 40 years from my lifespan and give it to him. He is so pleased with him, give him some extra time. And Adam lived a long time, so he gave some of his time away. Adam, But when the time, the lifespan of Adam came to an end, and the angel of death came, 
Awalam yabqa min umri arba'ina sana. Adam said, isn't there 40 years remaining from my lifespan? Yani, <laughs> didn't you come a little early? <laughs> Not time yet. Qala, awalam tu'atiha ibnaka Dawood. The angel said to him, didn't you give those 40 years to your son Dawood? One of your offspring Dawood? Qal, fajahada. Fajahadat thurriyatuhu wa nasiya Adam. فنسيت ذريته وخطي آدم وخطيت ذريته آدم denied such and then his offspring also denied it آدم forgot and then his offspring also became of those who forget آدم made a mistake and so also his offspring became of, became of those who make mistakes this hadith is authentic ثم قال الترمذي الترمذي هنا رد حديث said this hadith is حسن صحيح and it was also narrated by Al-Hakim in his, his Mustadrak and he said that this hadith is sahih according to the conditions of Imam Muslim even though he didn't, Imam Muslim didn't report it in his book the last hadith is the hadith of Imam Ahmed reported from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama قال يقال للرجل من أهل النار يوم القيامة it will be said to one of the people of the fire on the day of resurrection أرأيت لو كان لك ما على الأرض من شيء أكنت مفتديا به one of the people of the fire will be said to him what do you think if you had everything that's on the earth and if you owned everything in the earth would you give it up to save yourself from the hell fire قال سيقول نعم then he said, the narrator said, he would say, yes, I would give it up. Everything in the earth I would give up to be saved from the hellfire. Qala fayaqulu, then it would be said, qad aradtu minka ahwana min dalik. Yani Allah would, it would be said that Allah wanted from him less than that. Allah didn't ask for you to give everything in the earth. He just asked for you something that's even easier than that. When you were in this world, qad akhadtu alayka fi dhahri adam, and la tushrika bi shay'an fa'abayt illa an tushrika bi shay'an then it will be said that I have taken from you yani, an oath or a covenant when you were in the loins of Adam that you should not worship anything along with me but you refused and you insisted on worshipping something along with me this hadith or of similar meaning almost the same words have been reported also in Al-Bukhari and Muslim and these are some of the hadith that mention the covenant that was taken from Bani Adam and some of the يعني, details of what happened on, in that day and what will happen in the future in reference to how we will be called to account for that covenant. And these hadith يعني, give us some uh, good knowledge about the things of the unseen that we could not know except by revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a covenant that we have given and we are called to account for it. We are responsible and we will be asked about it and no one will be able to say, I didn't know who was my Lord, what were his rights over me, what I was supposed to do and what I was not supposed to do. And we will be called to account on that day when there will be no chance to come back and do it again. But now we have a chance to fulfill the little that Allah has asked from us, which is not much. So that in the day of resurrection, we would not be like that man who was willing on the day of resurrection at that time, he was willing to give up everything in the whole earth if he owned it. But now when he was in the world, he wasn't willing even to do the little things that Allah has requested of us. Imam al-Tahawi rahimahullah says in point number 43, وَقَدْ عَلِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي مَا لَمْ يَزَلْ عَدَدَ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ وَعَدَدَ مَنْ يَدْخُلُ النَّارِ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً فَلَا يَزْدَادُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْعَدَدُ وَلَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْهُ that definitely Allah the Most High knew before time, before the existence of time, yani from the beginning, the number of people who would enter the paradise and the number of those who would enter the fire, exactly. Allah already knew. وَلَا يُزْدَادُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْعَدَدُ And that number will not be increased, nor will it be decreased. Yani the knowledge of Allah, of the number of people of paradise and the, number, the exact number of the people of the hellfire is known to Allah and it will not be changed. This is obviously part of the 
Qadr and Qada. We said that Qadr and Qada has four principles. The first of them is that Al-Ilm, knowledge, that Allah knows everything. And the second of them is Al-Kitabah, that is all written in Allah Al-Mahfud. And the third of them is Al-Mashia or Al-Irada, the will of Allah, that nothing happens except by the will of Allah. And the last of them is Al-Khalq, that everything that exists, the human beings and creatures and their actions is all created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other creator besides Him. So from the first principle of Qadr al qada is Ilm, and this point comes under the first principle of al qada al qada that Allah knows everything including the exact number of the people of paradise and the people of hellfire. As Shaykh Muhammad al Khumayyad says concerning this point, <coughs> that Allah since the beginning of time already knew the number of the people of paradise from Bani Adam, from the children of Adam and the number of the people who would enter the hellfire from them he knew all of that in detail as well as in general complete knowledge of the general number as well as the details of those things and that number would not be changed it would not be increased or decreased and then he says and every human being it has been written for him in the stomach in the belly of his mother shaqiyun aw sa'idun that he will be of the happy or prosperous or fortunate or of the unfortunate, the wretched, the people of hellfire. And it has also been written in Allah al mahfuz in the preserved tablet where everything is written from the beginning of time until the end and the knowledge of Allah can never ever ever be changed. Yani Allah's knowledge is not increased otherwise that means he didn't have perfect knowledge nor will it be decreased because then it will become imperfect. Concerning this point about everything being written for the human being the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud which is very well known hadith, the famous hadith referred to by some of the scholars as the hadith as Sadiq al-Masduq the one who is truthful and who is believed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is said that he said inna ahadakum yujma'u khalquhu fi batni ummihi arba'ina yawman that every one of you, verily one of you he will be collected yeah, and his creation will be brought together in the belly, in the womb of his mother, uh, 40 days, not fatan, as a uh, seed, or nutfa. Um, I don't know what other word we can use, you can say. Sperm. Good. Oh, something like this. ثم يكون علقة Then he will be... يعني علقة مثل ذلك and the same amount of time he will be علقة uh, a, um, a cloud of blood ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك and also he will be uh, brought together as flesh يعني a piece of flesh also for a similar period of time يعني 40 days and 40 days and 40 days or 4 months 120 days for that period of time after 120 days ثم يرسل إليه الملك فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ وَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتٍ After the 120 days or 4 months, an angel will be sent to him who will breathe into him the spirit, and the life, and he will be commanded with four words or four matters, بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجْلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ Then he will be, and these four things will be written at that time, his sustenance or provisions in this world how much he will receive it will not be increased or decreased وَأَجَلُهُ and his time period his lifespan how long he will live in this world will also be written at that time وَعَمَلِهِ and also his deeds or his actions what will be his actions in this world وَشَقِيٌ أو سَعِيدٌ whether he will be happy or sad يعني prosperous or fortunate or wretched يعني he will be of the people of the paradise or the people of the hellfire all of this is written at the time when he is in the womb of his mother and it's also already written before that in Allah al Mahfuz. Uh, <clears throat> then also, yani, there are some comments here that are of importance and a very important hadith which I myself, uh, before reading this commentary, I never heard this hadith before. In the commentary of Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin al Albani on this point, that Allah knew from the beginning of time the number of people of paradise and the number of people of the hellfire exactly in totality without it being increased or decreased as Shaykh al-Albani Hafidhullah mentions here he says that the author meaning al-Imam al-Tahawi here is referring in this point to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr 
رضي الله أنهما may Allah be pleased with him and his father he said خرج علينا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي يده كتابان the Prophet one day the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the Messenger of Allah came out to us and he had in his hand two books كتابان and just so that there will not be any doubt this hadith is, is, is reported in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi and it is a Sahih hadith as mentioned by Shaykh Al-Albani uh, in more than one place uh, in the Sahih of uh, Tirmidhi volume 2 play, uh, page 225 hadith number 1740 or 2241 according to the two numbering of the numbers of the book the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out to us and in his hand was two books فَقَالَ أَتَدَرُونَ مَا هَذَانِ الْكِتَابَانِ Do you all know what are these two books? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them Do you know what these two books are? فَقُلْنَا لَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أَن تُخْبِرُنَا No, we don't know, Messenger of Allah, unless you inform us فَقَالَ لِلَّذِي فِي يَدِهِ الْيُمْنَى He said about the one, the book that was in his right hand هَذَا كِتَابٌ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is a book from the Lord of the Worlds فِي أَسْمَاء أَحْلَ الْجَنَّةِ In it is the names of the people of paradise وَأَسْمَاء آبَائِهِمْ And the names of their parents وَقَبَائِلِهِمْ And their tribes ثُمَّ أَجْمَلَ عَلَىٰ آخِرِهِمْ فَلَا يُذَادُ فِيهِمْ وَلَا يُنْقَصُ مِنْهُمْ أَبَدًا Then he yeah, and he mentioned or summarized collectively to the end of the of what was in that book and he said that it will not be increased or decreased ever then then he said about the book that was in his left hand هذا كتاب من رب العالمين this is a book from the Lord of the Worlds فيه أسماء أهل النار in it is the names of the people of hellfire وأسماء آبائهم and the names of their parents وَقَبَائِلِهِمْ and the names of their tribes yani in detail the name of the person and his father and his parents and his tribe exactly the name of every human being that's in the, that will be in the paradise and will be in the hellfire ثُمَّ أَجْمَلَ عَلَىٰ آخِرِهِمْ فَلَا يُزَادُ فِيهِمْ وَلَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْهُ أَبَدًا then he summarized it and said that there would not be any increase or decrease in these numbers and these names ever فَقَالَ أَصْحَابُهُ so his companions said to him فَثِيمَا amal, Then what is the use of deeds if all of this is known in such detail and everyone's name of the people of paradise and hellfire have already known? Then what is the purpose of deeds? إِنْ كَانَ أَمْرٌ قَدْ فُرِغَ مِنْهُ If the matter is already closed, it's finished. So what is the purpose of doing deeds? فَقَالَ The Prophet ﷺ said سَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا يعني just go ahead and try to do what you are able to do to the best of your ability moderately and properly yeah, and you do it to the best of your ability فَإِنَّ صَاحِبُ الْجَنَّةِ because verily the person who will be the companion of the paradise يُخْتَمُ لَهُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ his life would be sealed or the end of his life would be sealed with the deeds of the people of paradise وَإِنْ عَمِلَ أَيِّ عَمَلٍ no matter what deeds he do وَإِنَّ صَاحِبَ النَّارِ يُخْتَمُ لَهُ بِعَمَلًا أَحْلِ النَّارِ وَإِنْ عَمِلَ أَيِّ عَمَلٍ And the, people, the person who will be, who is, who, is, who is destined for the hellfire, his life would be ended or sealed with the deeds or the deeds of the people of the hellfire, no matter what deeds he does. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم بِيَدَيْهِ Then the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم with his hands uh, did such and such. فَنَبَذَهُمَا يعني he threw the books, tossed them, hurled them away. ثم قال فَرَغَ رَبُّكُمْ مِنَ الْعِبَادِ Allah, your Lord, He has been finished from His servants. يعني, from the servants. He has, the matter is finished. And then He quoted from the Qur'an, فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيقٌ فِي السَّعِيَةِ A party of the people would be in the paradise and a party that would be in the hellfire. And this is in Surah Shura, chapter 42, verse 7, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, and so also it has been revealed to you the Quran in Arabic language that you may warn the Umm Qura, the mother of the villages and those who are around it, yani the rest of the world, and that you may re- warn of the day of collection, Yawm al Jam, the day when the people will be gathered together on the day of resurrection. La Raiba fi, about which there is no doubt, Farikun fil Jannah or Farikun fil Sa'iyah, a party of the people would be in the paradise and a party would be in the fire.
Also concerning this uh, point is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud which we mentioned earlier and the conclusion of that hadith the Prophet ﷺ mentions similar to this he said فَوَاللَّهِ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُهُ that I swear by Allah besides whom there is nothing else that has the right to be worshipped except him إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعَ that verily I swear that one of you I swear by Allah that one of you would be doing the deeds of the people of paradise until there is nothing between him and the paradise except an arm's length the only thing remaining between him and the paradise is arm's length فَيُسْبِقُوا عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ then that which has been written would overcome him that which was already written would overcome him فَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا then he would begin to do the deeds of the people of the hellfire and he would enter it وَإِنَّ أَعَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ and then one of you would do the deeds of the people of the fire حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعَ until there's nothing he is so close يعني to the hellfire there's nothing remaining except the arm's length فَيُصْبِقُوا عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ then that which is written that the divine decree would overcome him فَيَعْمَلُوا بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا then he would begin to do the deeds of the people of paradise and enter it this hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim and it is important that we understand this point and not misunderstand uh, to understand this point we have to realize that what is written is what Allah knows in His perfect knowledge and not that anyone is forced to do such and such and so and so but it could be misunderstood that someone is a good person they are doing all the good deeds and then when the end, the end of their life Allah forced them to do some bad deeds because it was written that they would be in the hellfire and then they enter the hellfire or a person who was doing evil deeds and then at the end of their life because Allah wrote for them to be in the paradise Allah made them to do good deeds and then they entered the paradise but in fact uh, the explanation of such as some of the scholars have given it and there are many explanations the best of them perhaps is as some of the scholars said and it has been pointed out in some authentic hadith something which suggests the explanation of this is that the people would show yani they would display openly the deeds of the people of paradise and then near the end of their life Allah would make manifest that which they were hiding and they would openly do the deeds of the people of hellfire and into the hellfire that, yani, there are some people who uh, they appear to be good they show themselves to be believers and they profess to be believers but they are hypocrites openly they pray with their believers but secretly they are disbelieving in Allah this is called a munafiq the person who shows one thing openly but in their heart they have disbelief so some of the scholars explain from this hadith that this could mean that there are people who display the deeds of the people of paradise openly yani what we see appears to be the deeds of the people of paradise when in fact it is not so yani either their intentions is not so or yani they are doing it for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone yani they are worship they are doing good deeds for Allah as well as for other than Allah some people are doing deeds uh, they because they are being seen by others they yani need to be seen riyan so even though they appear to be doing good deeds but because they are associating something with Allah doing it for something with, for Allah and for other than Allah and Allah says that He is the, the most free Aghniya as shuraka and He is the one who has less need of having any associate so whoever does any deed for Him and someone other than Him then He would never accept it so in any case that which appears to us yani their deeds would appear to be the deeds of the people of paradise either through showing off or through hypocrisy or other than that and then Allah would make manifest the reality of that person and then they would do the deeds that are the reality of that person it would become manifest and then they would enter the place that has been destined for them that Allah knew from the very beginning and uh, some of the scholars also said that perhaps Allah out of his mercy might uh, allow a person out of his mercy he might allow a person to or he might accept from a person who in the end of their life after having been a sinful person maybe for 50 years or 60 years in the end of their life they sincerely repented and they start to do the deeds of the people of paradise and Allah accepts their sincere repentance if it is sincere then Allah accepts it and they enter the paradise and Allah knows beforehand who is going to repent sincerely 
and who is going to show yeah, and show off their deeds or, or who, who are the hypocrites <coughs> in point number 44 Al Imam Tahawi says وَكَذَلِكَ أَفْعَلُهُمْ فِيمَا عَلِمَ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يَفْعَلُوهُ وَكُلُّ مُيَسِّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ وَالسَّعِيدُ مَنْ سَعِدَ بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ وَالشَّقِيُّ مَنْ شَقِيَ بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ And so also, just like the numbers of the people of Paradise and the Hellfire, their deeds, the deeds of the people, is also known to Allah completely and perfectly and totally. He knows what they are going to do, the actions of the people. وَكُلٌ مُيَسِّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ And everyone will be made easy for him to do that which is created for. Yani what, if Allah created him for the people of the paradise, it will be made easy for him to do so. And Allah, of course, as we said before about the guidance, that Allah misleads those who turn themselves away from the guidance. And so also, Allah created people for the hellfire. Those who he knew that they are going to do the deeds of the people of the, of the hellfire, then they are created for that, for that purpose. Not that anyone is forced against their will and they have no free will in the matter, but Allah gives the people the guidance and calls them to the right, and then they choose according to their will and their ability to obey or to disobey, and therefore we say that they have been created for the paradise or created for the hellfire. Everyone, it will be made easy for him to do that which he is created for. This is the principle. And the second principle, وَالْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ And deeds are according to the end of them. Yani a person's deeds will be judged according to the end, his last deeds. And for this reason the Prophet ﷺ used to pray, Oh Allah, make the last of my deeds or the end of my life be the best. Yani that the, last of our, the end of our life should be the best part of our life in terms of obedience and submission to Allah. And the one who is sa'id or happy or prosperous or fortunate, the people of paradise are those who entered the paradise by Allah's qadr and qadr. And the shaqiyun uh, or the unfortunate or wretched or miserable or the people of hellfire is also by the qadr of Allah. Yani everything is by the qadr of Allah, by Allah's knowledge and his writing and his will and his creation. This is the meaning here. Here, uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad al Qumis, Hafizahullah, he says that also in the same way as Allah's knowledge of the numbers of the people of the Hellfire and the Paradise, also has Allah has knowledge of the deeds of His servants. He knows whatever they are going to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the deeds of His creatures before they do them. He knew them from the beginning of time. And He wrote them. And he decreed them, and every human being, will be, it will be made easy for him to do that which he has created, been created for. As for the people of the paradise, it will be made easy for them to do the deeds of the people of paradise. And as for the people of the hellfire, it will be made easy for them to do the deeds of the people of the hellfire. And the, and the deeds of a person, the yani, will be determined by the last of them. Al-A'amal bil khawatim so that a person, his deeds might be sealed by a deed, a righteous deed, after he had been doing much evil. And if the last of his deeds is good deeds, then he would enter the paradise. And a person, their deeds might be ended or sealed by an evil deed, after they had did some righteous deeds. And for that reason, if the end of their life was evil, then they would enter the hellfire. Yani, the end of it all is determined by the last deeds. And there's no one who would be of the Sa'id or the prosperous or the fortunate or the happy or the people of paradise except those whom Allah has decreed for them happiness and success in the next life. And he had decreed it for them and he wrote it for them and he made them to be of the people of the paradise. And so also Shaqiyun, there's no one who will be Shaqiyun, unfortunate or wretched or, or the people of the hellfire except whom Allah had decreed such and wrote it for them and made them to be of the people of the hellfire. And Allah says in the Quran, لا يسألوا عما يفعلوا وهم يسألون in Surah Al-Anbiya chapter 21 verse 23 that Allah is not to be questioned about what He does but all of the rest of the creatures, creatures are to be questioned يعني the wisdom of Allah of what He has decreed Allah cannot be questioned why did Allah do this why does Allah do like this Allah is not to be questioned but the human beings are to be questioned and on Yom we will be questioned, but we cannot question Allah. 
here, yani there are a few points, uh, let me look at the time, yeah. Uh, there are a few points here that are of importance, we should uh, try to mention them. Again, Sheikh Al-Bani uh, gives us some added information here that is of importance. In his commentary on Al-Aqeedah Sahawiyyah, he says uh, concerning this point, that so also the deeds of the human beings is known to Allah. Allah knows what they would do. Here on this point that everyone will be, will be made easy for him to do what he has been created for. He says that here, this, is, this statement is a part of the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu that is narrated in the Sahihain and Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And that hadith of Ali is the hadith, uh, a long hadith hadith in which it is mentioned uh, that they went to the cemetery and while they were in the cemetery uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ مَنْفُوسَةٍ إِلَّا قَدْ عَلِمَ اللَّهِ مَكَانَهَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ شَقِيَّةٍ عَمْ سَعِيدًا يعني that there is no one of you there is no soul from amongst you except that Allah definitely knows their place whether it will be in the paradise or in the hellfire فقال رجل من القوم one of the people from amongst them said يا رسول الله أفلا ندع العمل فنتكل على كتابنا فمن كان من أهل السعادة سار إلى السعادة ومن كان من أهل الشقاوة يعني سار إلى الشقاوة this person said Amongst the people when he heard this, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, shouldn't we just then abandon doing good deeds or abandon our deeds, leave them off, no need to work hard. We can depend on that which has been written for us. We can just depend on such. Then in that case, whoever is from the people of the paradise, Ahl al the people of, of, of happiness, then they would proceed to that which has been written for them and whoever is the people of shakawa of wretchedness or miserableness or the people who have the unfortunate end then they would go to their misfortune that they are destined for Haqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this point is very important here in answer to that question because some people may think if everything is already written and some of the deviant groups deviated like this if everything is already written then what's the sense of us striving and struggling and working hard to do all of these things, some of them being difficult for us and avoiding the pleasures and enjoyment and things of the world that have been prohibited why are we suffering like this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said اعملوا work do deeds you must struggle and work hard فَكُلُّ مُيَسِّرُ for everyone it will be made easy for him everyone everyone muyassir. it will either be made easy for him to go one way or the other that you must do deeds, you are required to work, no doubt about it. But whatever has been destined for you, Allah will help you to do it. If you strive to do good deeds, don't worry, Allah will help you and make it easy for you to do such. فَكُلُّ مُيَسِّرُ مَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ سَعَادَةً يُسِّرَ لِعَمَلِهَا Whoever is from the people of happiness, the people of paradise, it will be made easy for him to do the deeds of paradise. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْ أَهْلِ شَقَاوَةً And whoever the people of wretchedness or the people of the hellfire يُسِرَ لِعَامَلِهَا And it will be made easy for him to do the deeds of such. And this hadith is sahih. Uh, this hadith, the hadith of Ali. And it has been uh, reported in al sahihain in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And here Shaykh Al-Bani said, it is also authentically reported that some of the companions, and here also is a very important point, not only did the Prophet Wasallam said, in spite of the fact that it's all decreed and written and known to Allah, but we must work. اعملوا فَكُلُّ مُيَسِّرُ Everyone will be made easy, but do your deeds, you have to do them. It is also reported that some of the Sahaba, in response to when they heard this statement from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَالُوا إِذَنْ نَجْتَهِدْ يعني if it is so, then we will نَجْتَهِدْ We will make ijtihad, we will work hard. If it is so, that it's already written, but we are required to work, and Allah will make easy for us that which is written for us, إِذَنْ نَجْتَهِدْ Then we will strive, we will strive, we will do that which Allah has written for us, and that which Allah 
has made easy for us. And in another narration he said, Al-Ana Najid, Al-Ana Najid, Al-Ana Najid. Yani in that case, from now we will struggle and we will strive and we will make every effort to do that which has been written for us so that it will be made easy for us to enter the place that we are destined for. And this uh, hadith is a refutation, a clear refutation against the Jabariyah. Yani the people who say that the human beings have no free will but that they are forced to do that which has already been written for them. This is a clear refutation of this false belief as they have misunderstood this hadith and decided that if it's already written then no need for us to do deeds everything yani, is forced upon us but this is a clear refutation of them the Prophet ﷺ said I'malu. you must work, you must strive and the Sahaba understood from that that it means we must do deeds they said even najtaib then we will work hard al-ana najid then we will strive and struggle and work hard to do that which Allah has written for us and also, uh, concerning the other part of the statement of Imam Al-Tahawi, وَالْعَمَالْ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ That deeds are by the end of them. Uh, here, Al-Shaykh Al-Bani mentions that this is also a part of a hadith, the hadith of Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi, رضي uh, الله عنه, which is narrated in Al-Bukhari and the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. Uh, and that hadith is the hadith where, يعني, a part of it, it said, وَإِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالِ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ That verily, actions are by the last of them. They will be just by the last of them. How, how is the last of them? That will be the determining factor. And finally, the statement of Al-Imam Al-Tahawi وَالسَّعِيد مَنْ سَعِدَ بِقَضَاءِ اللَّهِ يعني that the one who will have happiness will be the one who will have happiness by the qada of Allah and the one who, who will be wretched will be by the qada of Allah. Here, Shaykh Al-Bani mentions the hadith uh, that this meaning is contained in the hadith that is reported by Al-Bazzar and others the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu which he attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the wording of that hadith and it is an authentic hadith the wording of the hadith Ash-Shaqiyun the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ash-Shaqiyun man shaqiya fi batni ummi that the one who will have happiness or the, be- or the person of paradise will be the one who has been made happy and he has been written for him happiness has been written for him when he was in the belly of his mother. Was I mean the, the wretched one. And was Sa'idun the one who will have happiness, Men Sa'ida fi batni ummihi, yani the one who was made to be happy or was written for him when he was in the stomach of his mother, that he would be of the people of paradise. Yani Shaqiyun the wretched and Sa'idun the fortunate or happy or the one who would have the success in the next life. Both of these, it is written for them while they are in the belly of their mother. Hmm. There's a long uh, point remaining here. I don't know if there's time. Uh, let us uh, try, inshallah. The last point that we'll mention today, uh, point number 45, Imam Al-Tahawi rahimahullah says, وَأَصْلُ الْقَدْرَ سِرُّ اللَّهِ يعني that the origin of Al-Qadr it is uh, it is that which, uh, it is the secret of Allah Ta'ala fi khalqihi. It is the secret that belongs to Allah alone. لم يطلع على ذلك ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل. No one knows this secret, the knowledge of Qadr. يعني what will be? No one knows it, not even the near angel, nor the prophet that is sent by Allah. وتعمق والنظر في ذلك. And whoever goes deeply into it and reflects on it deeply trying to search into the depth or the secret of Al-Qadr ذَرِّيَّةُ ذَرِّيَّةُ الْخِذْلَانِ that this will be, it will open the way for him to be left to go astray وَصُلَّمُوا الْحِرْمَانِ and it is the stairs or the stairway to Al-Hirman for him to be pre- uh, prevented that Allah will forbid for him to reach his destination yani his desire, what he wants to uh, search out وَدَرَجَةُ التُغْيَان and it is a degree of التُغْيَان yani going beyond the bounds whoever goes into this qadr in depth trying to search out the secrets that's only for Allah then it will open the way for him to be left to go astray and he will be prohibited and forbidden from reaching that knowledge 
and it is also a degree of going beyond the bounds. فالحذر كل حذر من ذلك نظرا وفكرا ووسوسة. So beware, stay away. Beware of such things. Reflecting on it, thinking about it, looking into it, or allowing doubts or whispers to come into your mind concerning the secret that belongs to Allah alone, the in-depth knowledge of Al-Qadr. فإن الله تعالى طوى علم القدر عن أنامه ونهاهم عن مرامه كما قال تعالى في كتابه لا يفعل أما يفعل وهم يفعلون. Because verily Allah the Most High has rolled up the knowledge of Al-Qadr, kept it from His creatures, and prohibited them from seeking it, as He says, that is Allah the Most High says in the Quran that uh, He will not, He is not to be asked about what He does. No one can question Allah. But the people, the creatures, they will be questioned. And this is Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 23. فَمَنْ سَأَلَ لِمَا فَعَلْ So whoever asks concerning the actions of Allah in his qadr or the wisdom of his qadr, whoever asks, لِمَا فعل? Why did Allah do such and such and so and so? Like they want to question Allah. They are not in agreement or they are not pleased with what Allah has done. Whoever asks, لِمَا فعل? Why did Allah do this? فَقَدْ رَدَّ حُكْمَ الْكِتَابِ That person has rejected a ruling or a judgment from the book of Allah وَمَنْ رَدَّ حُكْمَ الْكِتَابِ كَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ and whoever rejects the ruling of the book of Allah that person is a disbeliever the root of Qadr is that it is a secret or the essence or the exact nature of Qadr is that it is the secret of Allah that no one has knowledge of of the creation and it is not proper that anyone should go deeply into it nor should they try to reach the reality of Qadr as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الْقَدْرِ فَأَمْسِكُوا If Qadr is mentioned then hold back from it that means not that you cannot discuss Qadr but you shouldn't go into in-depth searching for the secrets of Al-Qadr, the knowledge that belongs to Allah alone, that He didn't give to the prophets nor the angels, or argumentation about it. So whoever seeks to reach this reality, then that person has traveled the path where they will be left to go astray, and they will be prohibited from having success, and they will also uh, be climbing the ladder that 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 leads to yani, the absence of guidance and they will have went outside of the outside of the bounds or the limits of what Allah has said uh, such that no one knows the reality of, of Qadr except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so no matter how much a person may think about such they will never reach the reality of it uh, and not only that but also we should be reminded or remember that we must believe in Allah that Allah He is the one who has the knowledge of everything and He is the one who has written it and He is the one whose will is in effect and He is the one who created it and brought it into existence and that these are the four levels of Al-Qadr it is a necessity that we must include all of them and whoever doesn't include all of them does not really is not really a believer in Qadr it is obligatory on every Muslim to يعني, refrain from and be warned from too much reflection or in-depth searching into the deep, uh, the, the deep secrets of Al-Qadr uh, or allowing the whispering to come to them or doubts to come into their mind concerning the wisdom of Allah and what He has decreed and also we should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited the, the, this knowledge from His creation, His creatures He has prohibited them from yeah, and even trying to reach the reality of, it, a reality of it as Allah says in the Quran, the ayah that we mentioned, Surah Al-Anbiya uh, chapter 21, 23 لا And finally he says that it is not permissible for any of the creatures to ask why did Allah do such and such or so and so because this is an action that it means the person has rejected the ruling of the Qur'an where Allah says that Allah cannot be questioned they have rejected the ruling of the Qur'an and this is clear kufr as for the one who tries to understand the wisdom of Allah's ruling the wisdom, yani, what is the wisdom between five prayers for five prayers in the day, why are there five prayers? it's permissible 
for someone to try to see the wisdom behind it. Not questioning why Allah made five prayers. You don't accept it or you disagree with it. But trying to understand some of the wisdom behind the law of Allah. Why Allah legislated zakat in the way He legislated it. Or fasting in Ramadan. In Ramadan and why Ramadan is in the month that travels throughout the year through different seasons. We may look at the wisdom behind the legislation. But not searching or questioning Allah's wisdom as though we don't agree that this is wise in the way that Allah has done it and we, we are not pleased with what Allah has decreed. This is the end of uh, the explanation of uh, Sheikh Muhammad Um And there are some commentary here, but time will not permit. Uh, yani dealing with the explanation of Al-Qadr, Sheikh Al-Bani mentions a statement from Ibn, Day- Ibn Taymiyyah, but yani it is similar to what we have already said and what we discussed previously, so we may refer back to what we did talked about previously about Al-Qadr and Qadha, the levels of Al-Qadr, uh, and the wisdom behind it, and the reputation of those who rejected it, um, because it is connected here to this topic, yani, and the meaning is similar. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, or corrections, uh, we may take a few moments before the adhan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. The covenant is taken. The form meaning, yani. Was it was the physical bodies? Yes. Hmm. I don't know if there's uh, anything clearly indicating what form they were they that what form we were in when we were taken from the loins of our father Adam salam. But it appears as though it appears from the text of the hadith, and Allah knows best, that the 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 offspring of Adam were brought forth from his loins physically. Because in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah caused every living being that's going to be created until Yom Qiyamah to be brought forth from the loins of Adam and stood in front of Adam, displayed in front of him, and he looked at them, and he looked over them, and he saw such and such and so and so. He saw the light of one of them that pleased him, and he asked about him. That means that he saw them. Uh, Allah knows best if it is physical form or just the appearance of how they would be in physical form. Allah knows best. But of course it's easy for Allah to bring the human beings out in physical form uh, even before he brought them into existence and Allah knows best. Any other comment or question? Taib, uh, last uh, time the sister sent some question but we didn't receive it. They put it under the door. Can somebody just check and see if there's any questions there? <laughs> Okay, because the door was locked so they couldn't uh, get in. Okay, then uh, let us just be reminded that um, this, uh, the Misaq, especially, is a covenant that Allah has taken from us. We are responsible for it. Uh, And Alhamdulillah, as Muslims and as believers who are reading the Quran and studying the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we know what Allah has commanded us and what Allah has prohibited us from, we know that which is pleasing to Allah and that which is displeasing to Allah. And alhamdulillah we have a good knowledge of the ways of seeking the pleasure of Allah and earning His pleasure and avoiding His displeasure. Uh, all of this, yani, trying to take this knowledge and implement it is a means or a way of fulfilling the covenant that Allah has taken from us. We are expected to fulfill that covenant, covenant and we will be asked about it, no doubt about it, for sure. So let us yani, strive and struggle to know uh, better and more of what is pleasing to Allah and to implement that which we know and always to call others to it and to remind one another to remind one another to try to do better to improve ourselves uh, and especially to supplicate to make dua and to ask Allah to give us the tawfiq to implement the knowledge that we are being given that which we are learning whatever we read and whatever we share with one another and whatever we are reminded of by one another we should pray and ask Allah to grant us the tawfiq 
the success in being able to implement it because the success is from Allah uh, and we feel confident that if we strive to do what is right Allah will make easy for us the doing of that which has been written for us we ask Allah to grant us sincerity in our intentions and correctness in our deeds Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk Bismillahirrahmanirrahim